We lived in a very large ward of more than 1,500 people. Among the girls who lived in that ward was one named Marjorie Pay. I saw her first when she was in primary and gave a reading. And I don't know what it did to me, but I never forgot it. And she grew older into a beautiful young woman, and we continued our association. And after a long time, we were married. When I first met him, I thought he was a very unusual man. He was different. Everything he did, he did with a little flair that was typical of him and no one else. He was a lot of fun, but he had wonderful integrity. He never had to worry about what he said or what he did. Marge and I were married April 29th, 1937, in the Salt Lake Temple. Stephen L. Richards of the Council of the Twelve officiated at our ceiling. It was a very impressive ceremony. We moved to the little summer home which my father had, and we fixed it up, put a furnace in, some insulation, made it tight and comfortable, and there we lived for the first two or three years of our marriage. Well, his sense of humor got us through all the crises in our lives. <laughs> because he never took himself too seriously or anything else too seriously, except things that should be taken seriously, of course. But he was not a worrier. Humor is a very important element in life. It's wonderful to be able to laugh, to laugh at ourselves, particularly. Not to have fun at the expense of others, but to see the bright side of things. There's a little streak of humor in almost every situation and uh, is the thing that gives sparkle and makes life tolerable, really. What a great thing is a little humor. Now, my brothers and sisters, at the outset, if you will bear with me, I wish to exercise a personal privilege. Six months ago, at the close of our conference, I stated that my beloved companion of 67 years was seriously ill. She passed away two days later. It was April 6th, a significant day to all of us of this church. I wish to thank publicly the dedicated doctors and wonderful nurses who attended her during her final illness. My children and I were at her bedside as she slipped peacefully into eternity. As I held her hand and saw mortal life drained from her fingers, I confess I was overcome. Before I married her, she had been the girl of my dreams, to use the words of a song then popular. She was my dear companion for more than two-thirds of a century, my equal before the Lord, really my superior. And now in my old age, she has again become the girl of my dreams. <laughs> 